How are we doing everybody? Uh, Archman here. And I just thought I'd do a little video to talk about the, the Nice Guy Machine uh, project so far. Talk about the shop, uh, shop life, all that kind of good stuff. Not sure if it'll be like a super popular video or what, but um, yeah, I was, I was going to film two videos today. One is going to be <clears throat> just talking about what's up, why I've been so absent from the channel, and uh, I'll also do just like a safety whistle uh, specific video just for grins. But a lot of you guys know, um, probably most of you guys don't really know, but um, I'm in full production here in, in my, this is my garage, in my shop, um, making a little titanium pipe that I call the safety whistle. So it's kind of a little art piece and just a cool project that is an homage to like my younger self. This is the one that I care, I EDC. Um, it is not a user. It's just a cool little pocket piece. Um, <clears throat> surprisingly, uh, I'd say half of the people that have bought them so far, I think I've sold about 30, uh, have are non non ganja users so and i'm an extreme lightweight so like for me it's like if i'm like with the boys and you know like playing disc golf or something like that sure i might take a couple puffaruskis but um for the most part it's it i i just i don't like to be like too super high or anything like that so like it's <clears throat> i have to want i have to be like willing to risk it <laughs> for me anyway um, but, uh, yeah, so it's a really great little product. There's nothing out there really like it. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful, uh, tool for me to learn with. Um, I didn't know exactly what my expectations with the safety whistle project would be, but I've decided to make it a production piece that's going to be, you know, limited production, but a full production piece. Um, Right now I'm only doing sales on uh, my website, niceguymachine.com, <clears throat> and I'm only really advertising uh, on Instagram, which is gonna change real soon. Um, once I've got production more and more figured out, you can see here I'm actually ordering these five and six flute tools today um, so I can really ramp up production and be able to afford to offer it with de to dealers and distributors. I've had a couple of dealers and distributors be, you know, show and be interested in it, but you know, you guys, some of you guys know that the average cost for, you know, just coming out of the gates with no reputation really uh, is, is a uh, 40%. So I get 60% of the sale, <clears throat> dealers and distributors get 40%. So um, just kind of the way that works. Um, <clears throat> As far as like talking about like me being absent from the channel and stuff, the main purpose, main reason for that is, <clears throat> um, to, and also why I haven't really uh, launched the Nice Guy Machine uh, YouTube is, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. It, it's just taken up every minute of my time. My wife and I were actually just talking about it last night and just like, wow, you know, Thank God we were able to put this in the garage because it would be miserable if I was having to commute back and forth uh, to a shop for both of us. Um, but uh, yeah, it really has absorbed every single minute of my time. Every part of it is, is more expensive and has taken longer than I ever would have thought. You know, it's funny too because I reached out to lots of uh, people I consider a mentor, but probably wouldn't consider themselves my mentor. Uh, and got a lot of preliminary like lists and you know kind of like just ideas as far as like especially like just tools and tooling what what do i need to invest in um obviously the biggest thing is the mill uh here which is just <laughs> i love it i love it so much it's the number one it's the number one thing you know um in the shop <clears throat> it's uh it is the it's the it's the it's the baby you know uh it's funny though you know I, I knew machining would be difficult. You know, I knew that it would be uh, frustrating. You know, I knew that it would be scary. You know, I knew all those things, uh, but I didn't know the extent of it. You know, like it is uh, the nuances of just like the programming, the nuances of just the tolerances and getting everything like adjusted and getting everything perfect. And, and this is, you know, 
my experience is nothing compared to someone starting off with like a little Tormach or something like that. Like that's, you know, that's really, really difficult. Um, Cause I started right off the bat with probing. Um, I started right off the bat, you know, never having even been in the same room with a three axis, you know, milling machine uh, to having a Haas mini mill delivered to my house, you know? Um, and this is very expensive, you know, it's, it's funny too. You look at the sticker price of a Haas mini mill. I think they're like 35 grand or something like that. And everyone will tell you, God's so dusty up here. Everyone will tell you like, you ain't getting that for 35 grand. I mean, it's like, that's not a functional machine, you know? Um, which is, you know, it's the truth. It, it really is. But every little thing, you know, the, the, coolant concentrate that goes in there you know that's 200 bucks every little tool and just the amount of tools that get end up getting broken um uh it is just you know unbelievably expensive you know i mean it at, you know you can look at it and be like oh you know it's not too bad you know a really nice you know end mill is like 35 dollars or whatever it is <laughs> but they add up so quickly um all the tool holders you know just like um, trying to be more efficient by, by ordering more tool holders. So you, you have a tool holder for every single tool in a project, you know, so I was kind of like right off the bat, I was like, mini mill holds 10 tools. I should order 10 tool holders. <laughs> not, not the case, you know, obviously. Um, and then all the ER collets and all that stuff, like <clears throat> you just can't really believe how, how it all adds up. I mean, half of you guys watching this video probably are like, yep. <laughs> but I mean, there were so many things where like, you know, that I just was like, things that I thought would be like, oh, that's a luxury. You know, that's like on top of what, I'm just going to look at this real quick. That's on top of, uh, it's just a luxury, you know, is, is kind of what I thought. Like a, um, a tumbling, you know, um, a media tumbler. Like, oh, that's a luxury to have your own. It's like, no, absolutely 100% necessary. I went with the CM top line. So, I mean, I kind of went, you know, high end. Well, basically as high end as you can go with a bowl vibratory tumbler. Um, and then it's like, I was, I never was like, I, I'm just like, I'm not going to do bead blasting. It's just not something I want to do. I don't want to deal with the dust. I don't want to deal with buying another thing. I don't want to deal with, a, you know, having to have a bigger compressor and all this kind of stuff. But as soon as I used Jeff over at Okluma Flashlights uh, bead blaster a couple times. I was like, I mean, you got to have it, <laughs> you know? And it's just one thing after another. Every little thing is like that, you know? Got to get a light box, you know? Got to make sure you have a nice camera. Got to have good tool storage, you know? You got to have, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, all kinds of saws, you know? I bought a three thousand dollar heat treat oven that's you know still hasn't been delivered and also with the whole covid shit um and all this everything is back ordered i mean everything like with tools you know like uh, these helical tools i'm looking at on my computer here right now they're like who knows who knows when it's when you're going to get it <laughs> that, that you know nobody knows <laughs> and, and like um 12 weeks, I think, is, is the backlog on my heat treat oven, which is, that's fine for me because I'm not, you know, that's an entire other, you know, skill that I'm going to have to learn. I am, the, the way that my brain operates, though, is like, if I'm interested in it, I will become, at least you would think that I was an expert about it, where like, for me, I'm just like, I don't know shit, but I can talk about it for hours, <laughs> you know? But that's just how it is. Like for me, if, I, if I'm really interested in something, I will get it, you know? Like, so um, that's a gift. Uh, everybody has that gift though, I really think. But yeah, um, so the shop really is coming along. I, I don't, <clears throat> I mean, every day, of course, I'm like, oh shit, man, I would really love to have this tool or that tool or whatever it is. Like the next thing that I'm going to get is anodizing stuff just because I can't, I know that anodizing, especially once I start doing it, sorry, I'm like noticing things out of place and dirty shit and stuff in the shop. Um, Cause I don't ever spend time doing nothing in here, which is, this is not doing nothing, but it's as close to doing nothing as I get in here. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm like, why, you know, why would I pay somebody to 
anodized stuff. Like you, I'm, I can, I can figure out how to work this machine. I can figure out how to set up everything and adjust everything. Like anodizing should be a piece of cake. I'm sure I'm going to be fooled by the, my thoughts, but at the same time, ah, I, I would love to outsource as little things as possible. That's why I bought a heat treat oven. You know, it's like buy a three thousand dollar heat treat oven or pay whatever it is five to fifteen dollars plus shipping or drive time or whatever it is for getting stuff heat treated plus you know god knows how, what how long their backlog is and if it's the information you get is reliable or just like a hopeful you know delusion <laughs> for, for backlog which i'm <clears throat> getting a lot of mostly everything that i've ordered has been that the, the supplier or distributor or dealer or manufacturer has had those hopeful del delusions which is why i personally will not be selling anything that's not sitting you know on my shelf here in the shop so like right now i've got eight saf eight safety whistles available there's eight in my shop actually seven now but um so yeah that's just kind of my my ramblings um if you guys maybe we'll do just like quick shop tour here just for grins i'm actually just going to walk around with a tripod because it's my camera is extremely precariously attra attached to it with my wireless camera and all that kind of stuff but so this is my personal garage in my house so it's and it's very very crammed full this is just a i'd say on the smaller but deeper side uh two side two car garage so you can see that's all just like my household stuff personal stuff and then we get into the shop stuff um a little bit farther than halfway so i kind of have you can see here the the halfway point with the garage uh, the motor there for the garage door opener um it's nice the previous homeowner fully insulated all this which really 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 makes a big difference i can heat this entire garage when it's 20 degrees outside with this little electric heater and keep it at like 65 degrees in here um so that works really well um in the process um you know every for me everything is always a work in progress so like i <laughs> I'm in the process of painting and remodeling in most of the, eventually the whole house. But right now it's my wife's um, office. And uh, so I've got her closet doors here getting ready to be stripped and stained. Um, I've got my Paco pads here. Those are for camping. They're made for river um, use camping. Um, I've got my bandsaw back in here. That's just a regular, um, I think it's a 60 60 by half inch bandsaw i forget i ordered a shitload of blades for it so i've got a lot and a lot a lot a lot of blades um <clears throat> i will be running uh 220 i got two unused 220 circuits in this panel right here because i've got a hot tub that i abandoned and then a uh electric stove that i'll never use that's 220. um so eventually that'll be run over here the flags will have to move because that's where the heat treat oven's gonna go um I've got my mini mill sitting over here. It's funny, you know, it's called the mini mill, but it's not so mini unless you're used to that kind of um, tool. Uh, but it's about 10, uh, it can, it's up to 10 feet tall whenever it's in tool change mode, which it's almost as high as it gets right there. Um, so this is the mini mill. Uh, I'm kind of uh, using underneath, I've got, <laughs> replaced just replaced this uh fan in my wife's office so that's gonna about to go uh, i was thinking i was like maybe i'll try to make a, a a generator with it i was like maybe maybe i'll make a wind generator just for grins but that's not gonna happen i'm gonna I'm just, that's going in the trash unfortunately the old trim from her office is going in the trash but um kind of stand back here and get a little bit of a better view of my shop space um and then to kind of get ready for the shop I also uh, replaced this door. This, uh, this door actually was non-compliant. Uh, I'm a, 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 a carpenter and contractor <clears throat> and, you know, licensed, uh, take it, t test, t tested and tried. And t so this was a non-compliance door. So I, I replaced it with a fire rated door that's foam filled and all that stuff. So that makes a big difference because uh, our TV room is just on the other side of this um, and you can't hear anything. You can barely hear the compressor running. Um, through it 
with the new door. And then I put in a sink. Luckily, the utility room is in the basement and it's just down from right right there. I mean, so like that sink was just like begging to go in. I mean, it was just easy, easy peasy. I literally had to run like 14 inches of two inch PVC and then just a couple of little stubs for hot and cold. So that was a no brainer that had to happen. Um, I've got some stainless steel shelving that's actually going where this coat rack is. Um, I just haven't had time to put that up and, and so forth. So let's go ahead and look over here. We got, this is kind of finishing alley here. So I got my um, CM top line. That's the half gallon uh, uh, tumbler. Got my Ameribraid with the full mastery package, which is just awesome, awesome. I can't wait to, to start grinding knives on this thing. But I, again, I just don't have the time. It's not, it's not my number one priority right now. But, uh, it is my number one priority in time, but it is not my number one priority right now. Um, I've got the belts hanging up high here. Um, I'm six foot four, so I can reach them no problem. And then I got my new, that's the newest tool in the shop, this blasting cabinet. Um, it deserves its own uh, video for sure. Actually, all this shit deserves their own videos because there's no good video. Even the manufacturers, no good videos really on these tools. Sorry about all the movement here. I'm just gonna get the tripod right. Um, but this, man, I tell you what, this bead blaster, it, it, it defies all, um, everything you're told um, with bead blasting stuff. I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but it's a cyclone manufacturing, whatever it is, they're, they're, they only make, they make three models, but it's all, they're all basically the same of this uh, bench top grinder. But that is, all the tools that I have are f awesome and, and great to use, but the most surprising tool that I own that has been just like, oh, it really works and it's really great, you know, has been that Cyclone manufacturing bead blast cabinet, which is funny because I, I never even wanted to own a bead blast cabinet. It just had to happen. Um, mainly for getting in and, and doing the engraving on the safety whistles. That was the main thing that really sold me on it. Just because having the, obviously the tumbling media can't get in the tiny little, you know, crevices of the engraving and a bead blaster is, you know, no problem to get in there. But, uh, yeah, just thought I'd talk a little bit about stuff. I do plan on getting back into knife reviews and all that stuff. I, I, I know I said I would do this American Blade Works uh, M1, but I just have not, like I said, I my free time is is in the shop. You know, it's funny, like we if, if I'm watch if my wife and I are gonna watch a movie and it turns out we can't really agree on anything and, she, and it's, we go into, which basically means we watch a chick flick. That means I'm fucking out of there and I'm in here. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> what she's bummed about, she's like, well, we were, I'm like, I'm not watching it anyway. But, um, yeah, so that's what's going on. That's, that's where we are. That's where I am. And I will be back. And in the meantime, guys, uh, I, I really am going to try to start to using some of my extra time. I don't have any extra time. Some of my time to build the nice guy channel continue doing some of these uh videos um it's just all this complicated editing i have to do <laughs> just kidding all right uh, oh yeah i, I kind of mentioned too that i i wanted to hire a producer um to do some videos and stuff I, it just it, it it can't happen right now i've gone just like not necessarily over budget but m to up to the threshold, really close to the threshold of, of the budget. And I've kind of realized that, you know, I need to pull back a little bit on some of the expenses. And, and that's one of them is, is I, I, I'd love to do it. My wife is doing YouTube videos now and she has a producer, um, a reasonably priced producer too, which is about $2,000 a month. Uh, <laughs> so you can see why it might not be in the cards. Um, Especially when there's just, I want to get the anodizing set up. Um, I got, I need to order lots more materials um, and so forth. So that is not going to happen right now. So um, it's just going to be these kind of very basic unedited videos, hopefully with interesting enough content. But Palo Abra to Madre, guys. I'm going to post another video right now after I do this one. Um, we're going to talk about the safety whistle.